and here's 2.0 and there's some rather significant differences between this one and the last one. This one here has got a knock or a rattle on the inside which I can't identify. Could be a wrist pin, could be a broken piston skirt, could be a rod bearing or something like that going, I don't know. Now one of the things I'm going to make sure is that that's actually pushing water into the pump. I got burned on the other one literally because I must have gone through four or five cycles and I just wasn't getting it to pump water. And I can see from this one here that it's actually got a decent seal. And the way I can tell is it's coming out of this little hole right there and that one up there. So I know it's getting up to the pump. Now the next thing I want to do is check and see if the choke solenoid's working. So I'm going to turn the key on and then I'm going to push the key in. Hear it? That means that it's actually choking. So now we'll see if we can get this to fire up. That's a pretty substantial rattle, so it's either, I don't know, I mean it could be a reed valve, but I really doubt it. I'll pull the carburetors and look, but my guess is probably the piston skirt slapping or the uh, rod bearing failing on the connecting rod, or hopefully not the crank, but the crank may have had a problem. So, but that's, that's a death rattle. So, anyway, this is 2.0. We're going to tear into this one, see if we can make it run. Well, I've got some shop-related dilemmas to deal with, and I want to work on some things, and I have to work on some things. This cover had come broken, and Holes Forma sent me another set right here. Look at the size of this thing. Just freaking massive. And this big saw has been in my mind quite a success. I've had no real problems with it. It works pretty good. It's just big. I think I'm going to set it up to do some milling, but I have to put that on the back burner because I have a bunch of marine related projects to do. Plus I have a couple of a couple of these to build. 555, 562 type saws. And uh, I've got Another one of these three-cylinder Johnsons. Well, if you think you're seeing double, you're really not. But this is yet another 70 horsepower Johnson. It's also a 1984, so it's virtually identical to the one I just uh, documented on, on video. This one here has got an internal knock. And, you know, you always go through, is there an easy way of getting to what's internal to this motor? The answer always is no. You know, it's probably a piston piston skirt that's caving in some, or some aluminum white on the on the cylinder. So, yeah, I could probably pull off the intake and pull off the cylinder head on while it's on the tower, and maybe slide another piston in there if we can find one that would fit better. But I think this presents an opportunity of coming up with a yet a better power head than the one I had before, because the other one where I had to take the block and all that, you know, it wasn't quite as, uh, didn't have quite the integrity this one has. So what we're going to do is, is go back through this motor and go back through the process that we just did on that other one and try to document it a little bit more intelligently so it's actually a little bit more useful than the last one was. And what I'm going to start with 
is I went through and already put it up, kind of documenting where the ignition system is um, on this and how it was laid out. And there's a couple of key pieces. Like if you follow my finger, that right there is the richening device. Or you turn your key and push it, you can hear that click. That's it opening up that valve to let a little more fuel into the motor so it would start up a little easier. The wire, uh, you have the one ground. And this wire comes up, and if you look, it goes through this wire loom clamp, comes back down here, kind of loops back up, and then goes into the harness over here, right? And then the other part of the harness goes underneath that boss. See it? Not over, but goes under. And then goes into this, this uh, connector right here. There's a wire loom. It kind of goes back into this recess, comes back, comes back up into this wire loom right here, and then goes up to the stator plate. Okay? Or that, probably the trigger, but we'll call it a stator plate. Now, from the stator itself, you'll see these wires come down in... This wire goes to the bottom, comes up, and then loops down. See it? See how it comes out? Goes in the bottom of this, goes through the wire loom clamp, out the top, and then back down. Where these wires right here, they just go straight down underneath the switch box. So that's to be noted. I didn't get this back on properly on the other motor. But you see where the clamp is down here? And they kind of bundled the wires up into here. Well, there's a couple of little components there to pay attention to. This too ends up going underneath the switch box, comes in here, then the wires come out the top. This gray wire right here is the one that goes to the uh, tension, the temperature sensing device here. And I don't know if it'll show. I did do it already, but between the boss that holds the bottom screw to this coil, top screw to this coil. That's where that wire goes through and then connects up. The connector is right in there. Another point is uh, from the switch box up to the starter solenoid that powers up the, you know, the key and the, the ignition and all that. Wire loom clamp here goes across between the top two cylinders, then goes into these between the boss of the lower bolt on the second coil and the upper bolt on the bottom coil, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark these coils like I did before. And I'm going to mark this. I'm going to put a top, bottom, then I'm going to do top, middle, bottom. So let me go get a marker. So let me uh, put a little bit of paint on these so I can identify them in the future. without making a mess. Top. Middle. Bottom. mark on the top of that one too. I've got this impact driver from Harbor Freight. I've been using it on trailer type things and I can't tell you. Yeah, see that came right off. And I used this impact driver to put the other one on. Just let it rattle until it stopped. I think that's a good number. So once that nut is off, see I got to use that nut with my lifting tool in order to lift the motor off the tower when I get to that point too, so can't go far with it. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use a puller that you can get from Napa or one of the, no, one of the auto parts stores to pull that off. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to give it an attempt. But I've got to set it up first, so let me do that. Okay, so here's the setup. 
I've got the harmonic balancer right here. Then I've got this hardened steel plate that has three slots. Now I'm sure that there's a better tool than this out there. It's just, it's just this is what I have. And the funny story about this one is that plate was made in the machine shop in Milford, Connecticut at a company called Big Pins. And the fella who did it at the time was a guy named, well, I'm just going to call him uh, RB for now. So RB, thank you very much. Same guy had a big KTM. So what I'm going to have to do is make sure I've got enough thread engagement to make, to make it worthwhile. Okay. All right, I was able to go down yeah, and tractor supply had some longer bolts. One of the things I've learned over the years, and I want to let my kids understand this or whoever happens to be watching this, this video, is on these larger projects, you can't just slam through them. You've got to kind of pick your way through them. And as we become more and more familiar with the three-cylinder ones, I'm hoping you're going to learn right with me. Because we got about three or four more to do. You know what I'm saying? But pick through it. And don't rush. Take the time to do a little bit of analysis when you go from one step to the next. For example, you don't want to go too deep uh, into these holes because what will happen is you'll run into that very expensive stator in those coils. So measure to make sure you don't put your screws in too deep. So right about there. So I would say I'm going to leave, I don't know, almost a quarter of an inch of thread showing. So I want about two-thirds of that thread in there because I really don't want to get down into the, the plastic. And of course, I need the thread engagement in order to make this, this whole thing work, right? So, you know, a project like this, what's going to happen is we'll, we'll take a step, document what you have. If you don't have a, a manual, I'm doing it with the video camera, to document what you've done so that when you, on the flip side of the project, you can look at your own documentation of the events to make sure you haven't made a mistake or, God forbid, there be an issue. You can start tracking your uh, the things that you've done to see if you can figure out what the issue was and did you create the issue. You know? I did that, and I've done that with the, with the solenoids. I figured out my problem. I've got a problem with the solenoids. So I'm going to go bring this down. And then we're going to lay on that pretty hard. It may need more than that, but let me just see what I got. If it comes off, it comes off. If it doesn't, we'll go to the next step.
There it goes. Look at that thing. So the strategy worked. That's how you take off a, a flywheel from a, an outboard. Okay.